and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest, Gary Coleman, is a painter who is best known for his landscape interpretations of the golden rolling hills of California. He also paints very interesting self-portraits and abstract oil paintings. So welcome, Gary. Thank you, Sally. So tell us a little bit about your background. How did you become involved in painting? Uh, probably the best starting point is 1964 when I had a horrible year of teaching high school English and I heard about a job in Europe and took it. It was to be a diplomatic courier for the State Department oh. which had me traveling through every capital city in Africa, the Middle East and Europe, wow. East and West. Uh, and I did that for two years and started questioning whether that was a really good use of my time and decided to move to Paris learn French in a week, <laughs> and uh, start painting. So I did. I moved to Paris, and I presented a, a painting to the Ecole des Beaux-Arts, and they accepted me. So I was uh, étranger libre, and I had free education at the prestigious uh, Beaux-Arts. Wow. The learning French didn't work so well because <laughs> during the, that first week when I was supposed to have learned it, I met the woman who would become my wife for the last 51 years, and she had just learned English in England. She's wow. from the German Alps. Beautiful. So I got some training there, probably not very much. I'm mostly a self-taught artist. Great. So. What inspires you to create these beautiful landscapes and the colorful portraits that you do? Part of it is something I mentioned before, a, a feeling of a need to do something that I think is important. And for me, being creative is very important. So um, I try to paint things that I know. I'm a third generation native Californian, and so I know California. I don't try to paint tourist places I've been. Uh, I know myself pretty well, so I also do self-portraits. And I think I know something about painting that transcends object so that I can deal with color, form, uh, emotion to do abstract paintings. And sometimes all it takes to be inspired to paint is that first stroke of red or orange on mm -hmm. the canvas and just goes from there. Well, you. Let's take a look at some of your portraits, and you can talk a little bit about that abstraction and okay. how you look at them. For me, um, so let's pretty much take a all look at art, pretty much all art is abstraction, though, because I internalize something that I'm going to want to do something with, and it gets changed just because it passed through me. So that's an abstraction. So all of my art is abstract, really. Well, let's take a look at some of the JPEGs okay. that you okay. have. Uh, 1979 was probably the only painting I did in 1979 because I was teaching English and Social Studies at Leland High School. Had two small kids. Oh yeah, busy, busy. Yeah, and you can see behind me the still life and the paints. What was supposed to happen was me painting a still life, and that lasted until the mirror captured me. <laughs> in the background, you see the top of my wife's head as she's reading and three paintings that show me slowly painting by painting fading away. So <laughs> this is uh, autobiographical. It's also a time capsule because nobody has orange shag rub rugs and barn wood on their walls anymore. So that's 1979. The first show I ever had was in, 19, uh, was in 2000. It was at the Pacific Art League, and it was called Artist as Landscape. It was a series of paintings I did using myself as the object, and in most cases not using a mirror. This is one piece from that. 
This is another piece from the same show. Uh, the common commonality of these things are the shorts and the flip-flops. This one is called 200 zoom, which goes for the camera. And this one is has a place in a book called The Great Big Book of Fashion Illustrating. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know, flip-flops and shorts. Right. Well, that's cool. I like the cropped angles that you're using in these. They're really interesting. This is from the same series. This one is called White Man's Burden because that ugly white skin that we produce if we don't get any sun on it is just something <laughs> we do not like. People may be, some people may be racially biased against color, but none of us like that leg color there. <laughs> well, I like the really bright light on this one compared to the other shadowy parts that you've been painting. All of these were partly to prove to myself and to other people that I really was an artist. And so I picked things that required some technical skill. Oh, yeah. Painting of hands and things is not the easiest. Oh, no. And now we go to abstraction. Uh -huh. As I said, all art for me is abstract. This particular one has pushed the abstract further. You can see this, again, is a figurative piece. If you look hard enough, you'll see two hands. You'll see a toe. Uh, I don't use toe polish, but it looks like it has <laughs> toe polish on it. Yep, I see. And some shoulders and a head. Yeah, so very abstract. The head sort of up in the yes, top yeah. corner. Yeah, it's another self-portrait. That's a self-portrait. Of course. Uh, this started out to be a pure abstract, a completely non-representational piece. And what you have here is mostly underpainting. Uh, the underpainting was so exciting that it drove me into putting something else in there. The face became the something else. So this is a case of going from abstract to figure. The other ones were mostly figure to abstract. Interesting. And this one, is, this one gets a little further. Uh, this could be an abstracted landscape or an abstracted uh, figure. This one is part of a series that later I may refer to. Um, and this particular piece won the Best of Show at the Pacific Art League in 2014. I really like the contrast of the really bright colors and the dark spaces with like punctuated with tiny dots of color. That's really a nice composition there. No, thank you. So the paintings that are behind me mm -hmm. are similar to the abstract ones. Is that part of the series? It is, uh, but these are going to show better I think with the landscape series. Uh, the, these are not part of the Artist as Landscape series, but uh, these are, again, the, the bigger one is abstract landscape and figure all together. And you, oh. if you look just a little bit, you can see them all. There's a, a rump there, there's a breast, there's a shoulder and an arm. <laughs> well, and it's then nice there's that California. in abstract, you can sort of see what you want to as well, a little bit. That's one of the things that's really difficult for me is to go out and do plein air painting because right. I feel some obligation to Mother Nature not to screw with her too much. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you in my do. studio, I can do whatever I want. Well, let's take a look at your process, how okay. you start with your concept and what you do to create okay. the painting. Uh, I used to... Is this going to show? Mm -hmm. Okay. I used to go out and do pastels. Uh, as a prep for a painting. The pastels were hard work, and I eventually got to the point where uh, I'd take the pastel home, I'd struggled with it, the wind had blown it around, I'd get home, and in five minutes it was forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> so now I don't bother with the pastels. Now I take a series of photographs, and from the photograph I then get started. Getting started usually means a sketch. And this is a pencil sketch. So when you're doing the pencil sketch, what are you looking for? Form. The form, 
maybe some of the values as well? Form and value, yeah. The, the idea that a landscape is a landscape doesn't really hold very long if you're trying to make a painting. A landscape is forms, it's shapes, it's movement. Uh, or it can just be, if you want it to, if you really want to work at it, it can just be cute and somebody will say, oh yeah, that's cute, I've been there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's not where I want to go. Uh, the painting behind me is a triptych, and here's how the triptych would have started. It starts with uh, a division of the page into three parts, and those parts then are going to be put onto three canvases. After the pencil sketch, I usually, and this is just on crummy old paper, I usually do then uh, a brief painting, again using oils. This is two samples of what I was trying to do. You see the top one looks like something like the painting behind me because that's the one that that's I went with. That's the one that with. you chose. So you're, you're looking for composition and for... I'm looking for composition. I'm looking for something that moves me and that makes me feel that I've done something of my own, not that I've done... This is more about poetry and not about prose. This is not a description. This is not how your washing machine works. Right. So this is my poetry. That's the, beautiful. The way it happens, and the camera from the top is going to come in now, I think, it starts out, after I've done those sketches, okay. it will start with a vine charcoal drawing. You can hear the scraping there. That's my fingernails going. OK, that's something of what we're looking at. So you do just a very very Basic quick sketch. sketch. Interesting. And this sketch will be on a full-size canvas, and it will sit in the studio with four or five other paintings that I'm working on. I never work on one painting. I always have four or five paintings. One of them is always an abstract, because I think that keeps me honest as to form and things. And the other three or four may be landscapes, because I can move them out of the studio easier, because People understand landscapes better yep. than they understand. <laughs> That's true. Right. So this will be sitting somewhere in the studio for maybe two weeks, and I may walk by it and say, no, nah, that doesn't work for me, and then maybe change a line, maybe change an entire cloud formation. So once you've done your initial study, you then move on and keep changing it? Right. And so this eventually will be something I'm happy with, at which point I will undercoat it with some neutral color and start painting. Start painting. So you have, so how many layers of paint will end up on a canvas like this? Depends on how much I hate it at some point. <laughs> what with, does that mean? <laughs> well, with oils, I think the hardest medium is watercolors. You, oh, get, yes. you get one, one shot, try. you screw up, and you're done. Yep. I paint over things. I, I put something in a gallery, and then I may look at it later while somebody's standing beside me. I'm standing in the gallery, and this guy's looking at this thing. I'm looking at it, and I'm getting much more critical than I was before. So I'll take it home, and I'll paint on it some more. So you have some more little studies here of the colors. Okay. Let's take a look at those. What are those These, about? They okay. look really interesting. The painting behind me was done by the sketches I showed you. Yes. Somebody saw this painting and said, you know, I really don't like that cloud in the middle. It looks too much like a heart, but I really want a painting somewhat like this. Right. So that's, that's how I start commissions. The, the person, okay. the person said, I want, I like that. I like that. And I said, okay, I, I'm not gonna paint that for you because it's already done, but I could do something from the same sketch and see if we can get something you like. So this is a sketch. Uh, are we up on top? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. This is a sketch done from that sketch, or from that painting. From that painting. So now we're making a trip in another direction. We're trying to please somebody who is giving me input uh -huh. into the painting. 
And so that's how you would work with someone who's who wants a commission. And then they say, yes, that's it, and then you paint that. This, partic much. this particular Windy Hill composition right. has been really popular. The oh, first good. one I ever did was hanging in our living room, and I posted it online. Some lady from Ames, Iowa bought it, which kind of hurt because it had been a gift to my wife for uh -oh. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But it went to Ames, and I've done since then, I've done like six or seven of them. Uh, one of them is hanging at um, Noah's Bar and Bistro in Morgan Hill. They bought an entire series of nice. my things, and that's one of them that's hanging in their Excellent. dining room. Well, let's take a look at some of the other paintings that you've done of landscapes. And okay. we're going to progress from the more realistic down again through abstract. Okay. So let's take a look at those okay. JPEGs. Good. Oh, okay. Tuscan Pines. Uh, this is a really old painting, but this is a painting which, again, form matters. So I had this landscape, and the landscape was all just kind of uh, horizontal. It was always just lying out there. And so I decided I had to break it up with something. And Tuscan pines just appeared. I have no idea where they came from. They appeared and they stayed. It seems like there might be some Van Gogh influence <laughs> there, in my mind you know, anyway. We are all, all artists are influenced by pretty much all art that oh, went before yes. them. And so, yeah, there's some Van Gogh in there probably. Uh, not on purpose, but I'm sure well, there is. Yeah. Uh, and that's, again, a scene that started from a hike in Windy Hill, my wife's favorite hike, and we've done that a number of times, looking down from Windy Hill to the bay. This, uh, I grew up in Walnut Creek, and this is a painting from Hillside in Walnut Creek, and this just felt so much like home to me. Uh, the golden rolling hills of California are words in a song by uh, <laughs> maybe several I'll, artists, I believe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll think of her name anyway. Uh, so yeah, this is yeah, this is home. That is like one of my favorite times, the golden, when the grass is yes. really golden before it's too dry and then the oaks yeah. like green, it's beautiful. My wife grew up in the German Alps and she just cannot wait until everything turns green. Green I again. Just, I hate it, <laughs> green is so boring. This is uh, close to where I was brought up. That's Mount Diablo. Uh, this is from Danville. And uh, you're looking again at the Tuscan Pines. You get something that works <laughs> and you enjoy it. Yeah, well, that one has much more of a view. I yes, like that. this has a feeling that you could go straight on into there. Uh, I don't intend to not be realistic, but I certainly don't feel comfortable in realism. I'm much more comfortable pushing out in some other direction. I can paint realistically, but I don't like doing it. This is another painting that is hanging. This is one of the paintings hanging at Noah's Bar and Bistro. Again, Windy Hill. God, I love that place. It's beautiful. Um, I would say your clouds are the most realistic parts of your paintings. Yeah. And your Everything clouds. Else. Clouds, people say, that must be really hard to paint clouds. It would be if you wanted it to be by, by trying to force them into being clouds by working at painting them. Uh, for me, the key to these clouds was painting in the uh, shadow areas and then pulling the shadow areas into the other areas by going with the lighter cloud surfaces. So. First, it was just a whole bunch of sketchy, uh, shadowy, grayish things, and then it became clouds. It became clouds. So you worked from darker to lighter. I don't know. I did that <laughs> time. I like the way you tie in the purple color when the shadows and the trees and the clouds in that one. I'm always, I am always aware of complementary colors and, and the effect they can have on things, and the purple will sneak in somewhere where maybe it not a real color. Okay, this is a again Windy Hill, but this one has been abstracted a bit more. Uh, this particular guy lives in Denver, Colorado now, and uh, somebody wanted a piece of California who was visiting me here. Uh, this particular uh, 
sketch came, comes up in other paintings. The hill in the foreground with the tree uh, being the star attractions and then fading off into the farther hills, giving the feeling you could walk up in there. I think the shadows are the star attraction in this painting, Yeah, though. you know, you might be right, yeah. Partly because of, again, the uh, movement towards complementary colors. Okay, and this one is, this is the first in the series of these sort of very abstracted uh, Windy Hill paintings. This is a more, more recent painting. This is uh, pushing the landscape further into abstraction. And this is something I'm working on doing more now than I did in the past. Joining together the abstraction with the uh, landscape. Seems like you've changed the way you use color as well. I also am using a lot more palette knife than I was before. So something might get smashed into the canvas and then get worked out later. So yeah, there's, there's an attempt to lose a little more control. Interesting. This is another from that same series. This is a series was called the Bright Series. And again, it's a reasonable amount of palette knife and a reasonable amount of pushing things a little further. What made you choose the sort of magenta orange <laughs> palette for this one? Uh, darned if I know. I, <laughs> you just I, felt the color? Is that how you, you know, choose them? Oil painting, as I said before, allows you to paint over things. So it may not have started out that way. It uh, ended up that way. But I think we had a lot more reddish orange in there before we went to the, the purple. So you're layering colors on mm -hmm. top of each other? Mm -hmm. Trial and error. Yeah. Oh, that feels good. Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> so, and then each section of it, it is obviously a landscape. You can see the trees mm -hmm. and, and that, but the, the way you do the hills is different. Yeah, I'm really, I am really interested in motion. So I really like the idea of undulating, rolling things, and then something slashing through them maybe. Um, yeah, but even though this is abstract, you still get a sense of distance, mm -hmm. which I really think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People sometimes will look at something and say, well, where does this stand in your progression of work? And like, there's, there's some kind of direction I'm taking, apparently, <laughs> but I'm not aware of it. Right. I, I'm just painting. I'm not doing some direction. I'm not going somewhere. Although when I do a series like this, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm pushing for in one direction. So this series is called Brilliant, and I was pushing towards brilliant colors and moving forms. Uh, I mentioned Pacific Art Leaf. Well, I just I love that place. I my first show was there. The first time I ever showed a piece of art was there. Uh, my my wife had gone to the bagel works next door and I went <laughs> in and I was asking myself, could I really ever show art in here? And I decided I'd give it a, a go, put a piece in and uh, first piece I ever entered won a prize. And I oh, thought, excellent. well, that, that's cool. I guess I'm an artist. And this painting, which again is, this is not from the Brilliant series, but this is again a pushing of landscape into the abstract. Uh, this painting won the best of show for the 2016 All Abstract Show at the Pacific Art League. Nice. I really, your colors are just really dramatic and bright, which is unusual for art these days. And I think I like to still can see the distance in there. You do it very well. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I love color. This is from the same series as that last one. This is, uh, uh, looks like you're doing a landing into some place and sort of an aerial thing. I did a series of these things that felt to me like a bird landing into a, an area. So this is a landscape landing zone. 
I can see sort of in the patchwork sort of farmland yes. and then there's the sunset in the distance. Yeah. But was that intentional when you were painting? You were thinking that's at what some I'm point, creating? At some point it was, maybe not at the beginning. So did you, in your sketches in the beginning, would you have had that horizon line there and that was guiding you? You know, I, I mentioned the sketching. Not all paintings start with catch, sketching. Oh, so this one is one. <laughs> I don't think this, this start with the sketch. I did a whole series of painting that were palette cleaners. I would just take the uh, paint off the palette at the end of the day and smear it on the canvas and start from that. Cool. So, wasn't there another one? No, I think that was it. Oh. Because so, the one that leads into these, I thought we had that one. I thought you oh. said you really liked that one. It was called Swirling or something oh, like that. It's not there? Look like a dancer. Oh, well, <laughs> okay. we can take a look at these again if you like. No, but, no. So tell us briefly where people can see your art now okay. and some of your future plans. Uh, as I mentioned, Noah's Bar and Bistro on uh, Monterey Road in downtown Morgan Hill has, I think, 15 pieces of my art that they bought uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they still have the for sale signs on them. And if I sell something from there, I have to recreate another one. And then they and I agree that that's appropriate for their space. And I give them 20% of the sale. So yeah, there's, there are those things. Um, I currently have on loan to a restaurant in Morgan Hill, 88 Keys, a whole bunch of uh, abstracts. And I'm currently in Gallery 24 in Los Gatos. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I've and been in a lot of galleries, but boy, galleries are just not making it. Oh, yeah, I love the stone, stone Griffin and, more, and uh, Campbell was just wonderful. That died, um, yeah, but lots of them. Died. You also participate in the Silicon Valley Open yes. Studios. So yes, people can every see year, there as well. every year, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here at Talk Art. Your paintings are just beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate being here. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>